All right, so in this video we're checking out the Ares Hobby Chameleon 220. This is your typical 5-inch racing drone, um, X-style frame, bottom-mounted battery, 2306 motors. These are the RCN Power 2306 Plus motors, um, 2580kV. The, uh, this is the forest version, obviously the 6S version comes in at an 1880 kV. So if you want 6S, you should get that version. You get the fly tower stack here, which is an F4 flight controller and a 40 amp 401 ESC. And these ESCs are 32 bit. You have an Aris branded video transmitter 48 channel. I believe it's up to 400 milliwatts. Um, check the specs, I don't remember exactly what the maximum milliwatt rating is that I flew it at 200 milliwatts. It's an analog system obviously. And you have a Cadex Rattel, standard Rattel here. It's a micro-sized camera, analog camera of course. And then you've got these uh, programmable LEDs on all of the arms. So they have, as you can see, kind of bling this out. Um, you know, it's diff to, to differentiate themselves from all of the other five inch racing drones out there. This looks pretty similar. You got separated arms, of course, in this frame. So individual arms, um, pretty nice gold hardware here. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this is any good or not, but it says that it's a 12.9 rating or whatever that means. Um, I guess it's a uh, hardened steel, but gold colored. Uh, typically, a lot of the gold colored screws out there are very soft and will just strip out. These seem to be okay, at least uh, they haven't stripped out, at least for me. Countersunk screws, of course. It's a very nice um, look here on the top plates. Also on the bottom, countersunk screws here for the arms and where the battery pad is. Uh, it's all flat and recessed, except for here in the front, but that's not where that's not going to be hit, impacting the battery at all. You know, nice, large, sticky battery pad back on the bottom here. Arms are five millimeters thick, and the I think the sandwich plates are two millimeters thick as well as the top plate. Now, as you can see here, they've done the bling. They've got this sort of metallic purple paint on all the carbon. So this is just carbon, but it's been painted, and then they've they painted this like metallic purple sheen on here, and then there's a clear coat on, to clear coat on top of that. And that's pretty much been the treatment on all of the arms and all of the plates. So they're, you know, because there's so many five inch racing uh, drones out there that look pretty much the same here as this one, they have kind of gone the pulling route and, you know, try and give the buyer something that they possibly can't get on their own, or maybe it would be a pretty big hassle. I mean, you can definitely you know, paint your own carbon, of course, that's, um, not, no, that's not rocket science, but it's, you know, kind of a hassle to paint everything, all the individual parts, and they've kind of done that for you in this package. So if you like the color, um, you know, it's a sort of a value added thing, but I think it does add a little bit more weight. So it's kind of counterproductive for racing, and especially for all these LEDs. You know, it might be pretty good for like night racing. So you can program those LEDs in each of the arms. Um, but it does add extra weight, so, you know, it does kind of go against uh, the racing philosophy in terms of trying to make everything as ultralight as possible. Now, I have um, the dowel folding props on mine, the F5 folding props. Um, they did come with a set of, like, I don't know what kind of props they were, but they were really janky. And um, this was an early production release, so I got, like, just, I think whatever, they just threw whatever 5-inch props they had on hand. I didn't even know what they what they were, so... I didn't even bother trying to use those. I just used these dowel props here. This is fine for, you know, your typical flights. Although I don't think that if you're going to be doing some hard racing, I wouldn't use these particular props for hard racing. It's fine for sort of the kind of flying that I was doing. You'll see at the end of the video. It is pretty fast on these 2306 motors. These RCN power motors are very good. Um, if you have the skills, you could probably get way more performance out of these than, than, than the, my skill level. But yeah, these definitely are pretty good motors. And, um, you know, it's smooth bearing. I, I, I don't know um, what the durability is going to be like in terms of crashing because I didn't really crash this 
and you can see you know if you crash into concrete or brick walls or a bando this paint here is going to chip off it's just not going to look very nice in the end so you may want to you know think about putting some sort of tpu 3d 3d printer parts on the end here if you want to protect the paint and crashes in like areas that are going to be scratching up the the paint job okay so it's coming in at uh 311 grams here with uh, no battery and i flew with a variety of different batteries uh 1300 4s to 1554 they all seem to be okay so obviously the weight's going to depend on uh, what battery you're using um yeah so i would say if you're looking for more agility more maneuverability go for a lighter battery but it's going to give you a shorter flight time i think 1300s were giving me uh, roughly three minutes, maybe three and a half minutes of flight time, and then the 1550s are giving me closer to four and a half to five minutes of flight time. Of course, it all depends on your flying style. And I just flew the whatever stock tune came on the flight controller. I think it was pretty close to stock beta flight, if I remembered correctly. Uh, they uh, it didn't look like they changed really a whole lot of PID values. And this was, I think, running an older version, I think 4.1. 4.11 I believe. I think 4.23 is the latest version that's out now. So uh, of course it's hard to say what you'll you'll get on yours. I know that a lot of the manufacturers they will update their pit tune. So if you get a later batch, if you're watching this video like much later in the future, you're probably going to get an updated version of Beta Flight on there, probably 4.2 or 4.3. Who knows? Uh, for those of you guys in the future, let me know if you're getting a different version of Beta Flight on yours. So overall, you know, not a whole lot to really say about this. I mean, it's a very good performer. It's got nice components. Visually, it looks very nice. Um, obviously, the performance is going to be a little bit different and the props that they're probably going to be sending you. It's a T-Motor T5143 prop. So that's probably a better prop than the Dow props on here. So you'll probably get a little bit better performance on that one than these. But I actually just prefer the flight characteristics of this particular prop. Don't ask me why, it, it just feels nice to me. It just feels like, um, you know, it gives me enough power, but not too much power, but it's also at the same time uh, responsive enough for me to, to do the kind of flying that I want to do. Anyway, uh, that's all I got to say about this one. Uh, link down in the description if you want to check it out. Here's the flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. So it sounds pretty good right out of the box. Don't hear any weird vibrations or anything. Pretty smooth, but I would recommend flying a five inch in a bigger area than this. Also, I've uh, just switched to the new Tango 2. I flew with the Tango 2 before. This is the pro version with the collapsible gimbal sticks. Feels the same, but now, you know, I'm flying with the multi-protocol module. Finally, so... No longer flying with my Jumper C12 Pro. Pretty nice. So I'm flying with a 1550 for us. This is the new um, outline 1550 for us. Kind of hard to push this thing here. Small area, but I 
low end of the drywall needs a little bit of chewing. Probably need to do some stuff with the min, with min idle. This wouldn't be my first choice for freestyling. It's just the way the camera, the way the camera is, and the props and do. You can see when it does a roll. It looks kind of funny. And I am flying with the folding props. The dial fold five. Probably, I wouldn't recommend these for racing, these props. You probably want to go with, I think, a little bit of a, a bigger pitch prop. Maybe the Gem Fan 51466. Three and a half minutes, 15 volts. Plenty of flight time. Right, let's see how the range is on this multi protocol module here. So you can see the RSSI in the lower right. Pretty good. Still a good 90s. Yeah. So the 80s there. The video is not so great either. I think I'm just on 25 milliwatts though. Okay, about five minutes here. 14 point volts probably can go even longer. Pretty efficient on these props. And a 1550. Think a little more agility. Go with the 1300 for us. Um, maybe a little bit shorter flight time. But yeah, this is not bad. Not bad at all. Let me know what you guys think.